Hello and welcome to part one of Austrian gun makers. And this is going to be in two parts because Austria as a country has many more gun makers than any country we've been to before. And we're not going to go into older ones because that would be even larger as a list. So part one, we're going to be focusing on Furlach. The Furlach gun makers, Furlach is a very small town in the south of Austria with I think seven and a half thousand inhabitants. So just about in scale, that's quite a small place. Within that seven and a half thousand people is the majority of Austria's gun making community and some of the best gun makers in the world. In fact, it's fairly well recognized that if you want to go and buy a drilling, a single shot or something completely unique, that is the place to go. Depending on how you look at it, Furlach is kind of lucky or unlucky. They escaped commercialism of the gun trade. So unlike somewhere like Brescia in Italy, where every gun maker is now competing or majority of gun makers are competing on a industrial scale with big machine made guns, these guys still operate on very small scale, small teams of handcrafted artisan gun making magic. And as you're gonna see, it is gun art. There is nothing short of gun art in Furlach. And there's some makers that are a little bit more conservative, but they're still fairly close to perfection. So, let's go. So let's kick off with one of my favorites, and that is Johan Fanzoi, and they have made a lot of beautiful guns as everybody in this list of part one has. So it's unfair of me to say anything, but I'm gonna make noises about them all that are probably inappropriate. And I wish that I could say profane words to describe them because some of them are just so. But we're kicking off with Johan Fanzoi and they have made a number of guns. The first is a carbon fiber Kiplav, which is lovely. We're gonna move off of that quick because it, as much as it's beautiful and subtle and shows that they can do non showy stuff, well, they do showy stuff too, and they do it very well. The Ivory Hunter, a 416 Rigby gun with elephant skin engraving across the metalwork. That is particularly gorgeous. Next is the Great Migration, a 600 Nitro Express double rifle with spare 470 Nitro Express barrels. It is gorgeous. The gun is covered in African game, and one particular lock plate that has the wildebeest growing across it is just obscene. And my final one from Fanzoi is Dracon, the dragon inspired gun. I am a fan of any non-conventional engraving. I think that's fair to say, uh, as long as it's done well. And this is done particularly well. They have platinum alloy inlaid dragons on it. I'm not a big dragon fan, but this gun makes me a big dragon fan. From the scales on the metalwork all the way through to the wing inspired checkering, this Mauser 98 based gun is chambered in the minimum recommended caliber for dragons, and that is 300 wind mag. So next up, and I do resent not spending more time on each gun maker, they all deserve their own video, perhaps an Austrian tour is in order next year, is Ludwig Borovnik. With a mix of classical gun lines and furlac flair, this gun maker has some serious guns to its name. This one is called World of Birds. Wildfowl on one side with upland game on the other, and some birds of prey on the floor plate and trigger guard. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Any nature lover will just see the perfection in the engraving on this gun. It's gorgeous. The detail is so top drawer, in fact it's way above top drawer. It's sat on top of the bloody shelving unit because it's that nice. As is the Secret of Artemis, a 9.3 by 74R double with a twin octagonal barrel set. That's immense. That's pretty cool, we'll all admit. A twin octagonal barrel set is amazing, let alone the fact that the engraving is both beautiful and tasteful and gorgeous and perhaps not might be to everybody's tastes, but it is stunning nonetheless. My two favourite bits about the gun actually are the carved top lever, I think that is stunning, and how Artemis's hair turns into like this light scroll work. It is gorgeous. And as with all of these guns, you'll see little things that are done individual in these guns that have been taken by some of the bigger makers to inspire certain guns that they've made. And if you can spot any of them, chuck them below. They also do a bunch of bolt action repeating rifles that are gorgeous and some single shots, all of which deserve their own videos, but we gotta get this moving. Next is Jagdwaffen Shearing. Shearing guns are on another level now. We're stepped up into the slightly obscene bracket. The engraving on this vine gun is enough to make you weak at the knees, and if it's not, perhaps you need to go and assess your gun loviness. The majority of Shearing's guns have this real unique flair and taste and style to their engraving, which I think shows this another level of maturity that they've no need to follow any convention, and every single gun still looks good. They're not trying new stuff that looks odd, they're trying new stuff that is just beautiful. Anyway, I hope this is quite enough showcase of Shearing's work because or else I am gonna have to go and stop making this film. So let's get on. And next is the Hambrush Jagdwaffen. These guys have 21 different barrel combinations on their build spec sheets. 
quad barrels, triple barrels, drillings, veerlings, bock drillings, all manner of interesting barrel combinations. More important than that, they have a patented mega magnum bolt action. Mega magnum. Mega magnum. I'm a magnum fan. Mega magnum? That just sounds even better. A bolt action that is chambered in 600 Nitro Express is pretty cool. No doubt whatsoever about that. It is kind of big and ugly, but it's a mega magnum, so that's okay. You can accept it. Next are a couple of makers that seem to have kind of gone off the radar. One is Johannes Outshot, offering an array of classic fur-like designs. These guys produce some beautiful stuff. And the other is Jakob Korshat. Again, not sure if they're still in business, but they produce this little hammer gun, so even if they're not, you need to know of its existence. The geometry of the way that that lock hits up against the gun is just stunning. I like it, so. There you go. Carl Hauptmann, what can we say about them apart from triple barrel shotgun and a side lever double rifle, both of which are absolutely stunning. This company seems to like pioneering new ideas from the fact they patented the first triple barrel rifle in 1994 to the fact they one of the guys pioneering working with titanium barrels. That's awesome. But for me, it is the triple barrel shotgun with a single trigger and an ejector that is just somewhat magic. Next is Houseman & Co. We met them at Iwa last year, go and check that film out. They were really great guys, they some beautiful stuff. Their side lever single shot is stunning, their takedown rifle is stunning, but more important than that, and most of the reason I was really looking forward to Iwa this year, is that they were working on a four barrel gun that was exceptional and works off one trigger, I believe, and that was particularly special, and I was really looking forward to seeing how they were getting on with that. That's beyond gun making, that is beyond watch making, that is just insane. But we're gonna have to wait for EU 2021 to see it, which is a shame. Next is Joseph Just, another maker that has expired their online presence, but seemingly still exists by contact information alone. Just be aware that this gun exists. All of the lines hark back to a really classic design, but should have a hammer on the side, but it doesn't. That's stunning and actually looks beautiful. Isn't it stunning? I think it's stunning. They offer a litany of extremely exciting gun designs one even has a horn trigger guard. Who even knew you needed one of them? But now I do. The thing is, when you look at a lot of these Furlack guns, you kind of think, why? But then the real question is, why not? If they can, why not? Some of these guns are so beautiful, they're not, they transcend the practical application of a gun but they're still all working art. Working art is a very nice thing. Next is a gun maker we've referenced a few times and that is Peter Hoffer. And the reason they deserve mentioned on numerous occasions is because they are so special. The use of diff various colours of inlay, the, the designs, the unconventional designs of engraving, the see-through lock plate, the dinosaur four-bore stopping rifle, the, the 17 HMR double rifle! I mean, just, these guys are on another level. And they're not because each of these individual makers has a certain appeal, a certain presence, and a certain style, but Peter Hoffers is just particularly pleasant. It's a little bit louder than the others, potentially, but I don't care. They're beautiful. They epitomise the because-we-can attitude. It's like a innovation and fun central, and that's that's Peter Hoffers. Why not make a 17-inch mile double rifle? Why not? We made a four ball. We'll make the smallest. We make the biggest. Let's make the smallest. I think it's amazing. I really do. Next up is Prins, and we've kind of gone from the exciting down to the plain action. What, a plain action from a Furlack gun maker? Yeah, it scared me too. So they do a couple of guns that are definitely worthy of mention. They do a wedge locking single shot that uses like a artillery style locking wedge inside the barrel. It's fascinating, but mostly it's like, a, I want a falling block and I want a Kiplau. What can you do? And they said, yes. They also do something called the buck treble or the bock treble which is quite exciting. Uh, three different barrel combinations and the limitations on that are pretty non-existent. You can have whatever combination you like and desire. And they have the tag for it is three less reasons not to get your buck or something like that, which I think is kind of beautiful. But for me, it's the Prince number one action that does it. It's that wedge locking single shot. I think that is stunning. They also do it in a carbon fiber stock. So before we wrap up, make sure if you've enjoyed this video to hit the subscribe button. And if you like some of our videos, maybe consider becoming a member for just $2.99 a month and you get extra videos. It's amazing. I'm going to talk about two makers that aren't from Furlack in this video before part two of the video, which we'll go into the more commercial side. And they are from Graz, or as it should be called, Graz. This place is a lot bigger than Furlack. There's nearly half a million people live in Graz. And there's two gun makers there that I'd like to share with you before I end this video. And they are Waffenstuber Gugi. Oh, wow. What the other makers are to metalwork, these guys are to woodwork. I mean, they specialize in carving. 
there's a couple of models I want to share with you. The stock on this Big Five is just out of this world beautiful, and all of their guns are sort of typified by some light carving at the combs. It's sort of a, a real signature to their guns. Just look at the carving around the grip of this gun. It is beautiful. These guys aren't just about woodwork, but they have some amazing engravers that work with them as well. The final maker of part one is Lechner and Jongol. These guys have a more London-esque twist to them. They seem to be a little bit more conservative and a little bit more British in the way they present and make their guns. The subtle style is not exclusive and they do make some fairly flare-filled guns as well. For me, it's the hammer ejector shotgun that is just beautiful. I'm a huge fan of any hammer ejector, that kind of mixture of old and new, but this one is particularly gorgeous, I think you'll agree. They do double rifles with very beautiful engraving, and drillings, bock drillings, and trumpf drillings, some of which are built on round actions, which are just beautiful. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of drillings, certainly fur like drillings of, of old that are quite big and chunky and... These guns just add a refined edge to that that, well, certainly appeals. Guys, thank you very much for watching part one of Austrian Gun Makers. Take care, goodbye, don't forget to subscribe, maybe become a member, and we'll see you next time. I want to insert some joke about DSC, the Dragon Stalking Certificate here, but it's probably inappropriate.